All right, let's get this thing opened up and see what we got in here. It's a nice sturdy box. You know, it's funny is when I pack bases to ship them, I write fragile and I put an arrow up on it too, just like this. And I even thought that was my own writing. I was like, oh my God, what if I got the same box back that I sent off? You know, there's kind of like the holiday fruitcakes. There's only so many base boxes. <laughs> up this bag now and get to the uh, the hard gig bag inside hard cases are so passe nobody likes them anymore apparently too heavy too hard to carry so gig bags are standard this one looks like a pretty nice one I want to thank Jerome for giving me a nice gig bag along with this nice paste so here is the bag it's like a nice SKB, they're one of the big ones in the industry. All right, let's have a look and see what we have in all of our little goodie pouches. What we got in here? Let's see, we have a truss rod adjustment tool. Put that right down there. Uh, looks like I have a Torzol t-shirt which is kind of nice, except it is a large, and I am a extra, extra large guy, so I don't know who's going to wear that one. Somebody, but thanks for the t-shirt. Very cool. Uh, let's see, we're back in the gig bag here. There's all kinds of little pockets. I'm just going to check them all to see if there's anything in here I need to know about. Looks like they're probably going to be empty, but it doesn't hurt to check. It's a real nice gig bag. Plenty of room for your stuff. Okay, well that pocket is now officially checked. And we've got our strap pocket up here, which should be empty. And it is. All right, so now the big moment of truth, the big reveal. This is our base. Go ahead and open this up. This is my first time seeing it, other than a couple of pictures, so there we go. That is a beautiful base. How about that, huh? It's a swamp ash body, and that is a flamed maple top. This is a full 24 fret neck, five strings obviously. It is a multi-scale base, meaning that the G-string here is the 34-inch scale length, and each one is three-quarters of an inch longer until you get down to the B-string, which is 37 inches from the bridge up here to the nut. These are Nordstrand big split pickups, which are split coil, kind of uh, like a precision bass tone. Uh, I had Jerome build it with only these two knobs. Each one is a volume knob, for each pickup, and these are linear taper knobs. Most bass knobs, you turn them and you get almost like 75, 80% of your adjustment in the first little bit of the turn. I asked him to put linear taper knobs so that if we turn it a quarter, you're getting a 25% adjustment. I just figured that's a better way to do it. Uh, the fretboard is made of, hope I'm saying this right, Vinge, and we have a matching headstock. Uh, you can see the back of the body has a little bit of a curve to it, a little ergonomically there. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, that is a beautiful maple neck. I don't think that's roasted. It would be darker if it were roasted, but it's still very nice. A lot of uh, figuring in it. Uh, this is a one-off custom build, by the way. Oh, we have more Torzol. Hey, what do you know? There's an extra large shirt in here too. Still too small for me but maybe somebody I know can wear that. Uh, let's check the case, see if there's anything else hiding in here. Aha! A little Torzol card that says, Thanks, Charles. Signed by Jerome, who is the builder, Jerome Little. His uh, guitar company used to be called Little Guitar Works, but then he changed it to Torzol. 
And you can see it mentions here the natural twist. I haven't really talked about that yet, but uh, here it is. The neck actually has a twist in it on purpose. And that is so that the angle of your hand changes from being flat like a traditional base up here at the top to being more curved down here, which is more comfortable. It's a more comfortable wrist position. As you move up the neck, your hand gets flat, but as you come around here, there's more of a turn, which is how your hand wants to hold the base naturally. It's an ergonomic innovation. I don't know if Jerome invented it himself, but he certainly popularized it. Jerome makes all of these by hand himself in his shop in Austin, Texas. He does not have a factory. He is one guy that makes it all by hand. These appear to be, I'd have to confirm with Jerome, but uh, I believe these are hip shot. These are individual bridges and they have to be set at that staggered angle like that to accommodate the different scale lengths. For instance, this one has to be here so that the distance from here to the nut is 34 inches. If you had a flat parallel bridge here, it wouldn't line up right. So each string has to have its own length. That's why they're staggered like this. A great thing about this base is that it does not suffer from neck dive. I don't have it on a strap yet, but I can feel the balance of it just holding it. I'm fairly certain we're not going to get any neck dive. Uh, neck dive, if you're not familiar with it, is the tendency of a base to hang like this on a strap. The headstock winds up being heavy and pulls down on the strap and it wants to hang like this. A well-balanced base will just hang this way. Uh, it looks like Jerome went to some effort to put light tuning machines on this. These are hip shot. They look like the ultralights, which are the, some of the lightest you can buy. The headstock is thin. Doesn't seem to have a lot of mass. There's not a lot of extra wood up there for any particular reason. Yeah, I can't wait to get this plugged in and check it out. But that is for another video.